Ladies and gentlemen, this is Robertson, also known as Baraban, and welcome to another episode of Terra Firma Punk. And I've just spent the night helping these brave villagers defend the settlement against the zombies, but now that it is morning, it is time for me to make my final preparations for the voyage to find these guys a new home. As you can see, I've taken items from this chest on the outside, and also the one in here as well, and moved everything into this barrel and the three ceramic containers inside, just to make sure that I've got all the essentials with me for when I start a new settlement. Now that it's sealed, I can break it with my axe, which should put it on my back. There we go, this means I can take all this stuff with me. Now the question is, can I see this in third person? Aha, <laughs> yes you can! Brilliant! It looks a bit weird and it only stays in one position, but hey, you get the idea. At least it displays the fact I've got a great big sodding barrel on my back. You know, just in case I forget. Right, I'll take this reward bag as well. And I think I'm pretty much ready to leave. So I'll just wave a final farewell to the Stone Age settlement and begin my epic voyage to find a new place for these people to live. Somewhere further south, that's warmer, has more food, and preferably is not crawling with minotaurs or evil trolls. I have to admit though I will kind of miss this place. But adventure beckons. Ah, that's where I started, just over there. If I'd gone the other direction, I would have found the village first. Oh well. Anyway, let's take a look at my atlas. I reckon I'll start off by following the coast south down this way and see what lands I can find. Which means it's time to test out my boat. It looks like those crabs are far enough away, so I should be okay. And away we go. I wonder what this looks like in third person. <laughs> Brilliant. Sitting on a boat with a barrel on my back. I am so taking a screenshot of this, by the way. Anyway, enough hilarity. I have got some exploring to do. Now well, that's handy. It looks like the atlas is updating in real time. I was worried that you needed to keep it open to do that, but you don't, which is good. Still getting a bit of boat lag though, but you get that even in standard vanilla Minecraft. It's a little bit worse in modded versions of Minecraft, like this one for instance, as the land is a lot more detailed and it tends to stutter and rubber band more. Especially when you're moving at higher speeds. The land looks relatively flat over there, but I've got a feeling that's part of the swamp land I saw earlier. Yeah, check that out. Nothing but swampland over there. That would be a terrible place to build a settlement. I like the fireflies though. Kinda gives you a feeling of serenity, doesn't it? Aha, uh -huh. looks like there's more land coming up straight ahead to the south. But will it be of any use to us? It looks like flat land, but that could be deceptive. It could be rolling hills or mountains edge. I'll get a little closer and take a proper look. I have no idea why that twilight forest hedge maze has spawned in the sea. That's a weird bug. Nah, I'm not really feeling it here. I'm going to head westwards and see what's further down this coast. If I'm lucky, it'll turn back south again. Yeah, look at that. Mountains. <laughs> There's no way I'm building a settlement there. That would be far too dangerous.
And this looks like some sort of steampunk workshop. If my inventory wasn't so full, I would probably investigate it. But right now, I think I'll come back at a later time. It looks like the majority of this coast is covered in mountains, but I'll see what's further down though. And it looks like more mountains. Yay. I do, however, see some ruins and what looks like a weird structure next to the sea up ahead. As with the workshop back there, I won't investigate them right now, but I might come back later on. Unfortunately, I'm just carrying too many valuable items at the moment, and if I do die here, I have got one hell of a long journey to come back for my stuff again. It's just not worth the risk. I have to admit, the scenery is impressive though. That's one thing I've always liked about Terra Firma Craft is that the terrain generation is always quite spectacular, especially in the mountainous regions. I've always been tempted to build a base into the side of a mountain like this, but I'm not sure how feasible this would be with Terra Firma Punk. I don't know whether those kind of mobs would spawn inside the base or not. I mean, let's think about it. The last thing you want to do after a long hard day at the forge is to walk into your storeroom only to come face to face with an ill-tempered mountain troll. Who knows, maybe some people get a kick out of that sort of thing. Ah, well that's good. It looks like the coast finally turns back south again. I just hope this mountain range comes to an end eventually. It would be good to see some relatively flat land again. Unfortunately, nothing I've seen so far makes for a good settlement location, so I'm hoping my luck changes soon before I travel too far south. The last thing I want to do is find somewhere good, light a great big signal fire, but I'm too far away for any scouts to see it. But the one thing I am seeing here is seaweed. I'll stop the boat just over here and see if I can grab some using my knife because I can munch on some of that whilst I'm heading south. Ah, no space to pick it up. Oh well, that's okay, I've got one piece, that'll do me. Delicious seaweed. <laughs> oh, hang on. Is that a bear? Yes, it's a bear. Run. Ah, he clipped me. Into the sea. Thankfully, terra firma craft bears are not strong swimmers. Otherwise, I'd be reenacting that scene from The Revenant. Ha, he can't keep up with me. And he certainly won't keep up with me now because I'm about to use my boat. Ha, can't catch me now, can you? Up yours, gentle Ben. You're lucky I don't have better weapons and armour. Or a gun. That's right, folks. You heard me correctly. You can actually make guns in this mod pack. You can make flintlock rifles and pistols using Flaxbeard steam power, and you can also make revolvers and railguns from immersive engineering. The only thing I did have to change was that I had to go into the config file for immersive engineering just to bring the vanilla damage values up to the same standard as Flaxbeard's. So now all the firearms are suitably deadly. The only thing is, I'm still a very long way from actually being able to make one myself, but that's for a future episode, I reckon. Anyway... This is a bay. I don't want to be here, so I'll have to come out of it by heading west and go around the outside and continue down the coast. And it's getting dark, which doesn't help. I'm actually curious to see how far I've travelled since I started my journey. Let's have a look at the map. I'll just zoom out and scroll up here. Yeah, it looks like we have come pretty far. 
and the land is starting to look more suitable. I'll keep heading south though and see what else I can find. Hey look, it's Wales! And I don't mean the country. That's the first time I think I've seen those so far. Anyway, it's night time now, so what I'll do is I'll pause the video and keep going around the coast, and I'll start recording again once it's morning. So, I'll see you guys then. That's the sun beginning to rise again, so I've started recording, and what I'll do now is I'll go into my antique atlas to show you guys where I've been during the night. As you can see, since we started our adventure, we've come all the way down past this coast here, and along to the southwest round this peninsula, and it's slowly arcing again over to the northeast, and it comes around over this way towards what looks like a, a bay to the northeastern side here. I'll probably carry on just a little bit more to the northeast before heading back south again. Ideally, I don't want to go any further north or northeast because that'll just bring me back towards the colder biomes again. Yep, as you can see, I'm still getting a lot of boat lag, but that's probably because it's loading new terrain. Now, let's see if I can get past these helmet crabs without being hit. Yeah, no sweat. It looks like we've just come into another bay that's just got swamp and mountains next to it, so I'll just keep heading back south again. Unfortunately, because it's still morning, we've got all that mist in front of me, so I can't really see that far. But hey, that just makes it more of a challenge. And I've just realised I'm still heading northeast. I thought I was actually heading southeast. Oh well, I guess it's time I turn around. What I will need to do soon, whilst it's still daytime, is see if I can find landfall somewhere so I can find a freshwater lake or a stream or something and refill this water jug, just so I've got fresh water to drink for later on. Not that I'm hoping to stay at sea for another day or two, but you never can tell. Oh well, this is weird. This is actually deep ocean, but it's coming up in the antique atlas here as being land. Hmm, probably a bug with the biomes or something. Fish. Bass to be precise. I only wish I had my fishing rod. Aha! The mist is receding and I can see relatively flat land ahead of me. Let's just quickly check the atlas and see if it's worth coming ashore. Ah, that cove to the northeast looks like a good place. I think I'll go and check it out. Whoa, the stuttering's getting really bad now. I'm not sure whether this is due to terrain generation or a memory leak because I've been playing for so long. Whatever the case, I hope it goes away soon, otherwise this could be really annoying. It looks like that cove goes deeper inland than I thought. Cool. I can see another bear over there, but I won't be getting that close to it, so hopefully it won't notice me. Actually, this isn't a cove, this looks like it's a river. Nice. In fact, this location does look pretty damn good. I'll keep following the river east and see where it takes me.
I'll tell you what, the more I look around at this place, the more I'm liking it. I'll just come ashore over there and take a proper look around from higher up though. It's a little bit on the hilly side, but the top of the hill seemed to be flat here. And it's close to a lot of fresh water sources. Ah, which reminds me, I better fill my water jug. There is game here, which is always a good sign. Plus, it looks like this particular hill has water on either side, which is an excellent defensive feature. And there also appears to be some sort of plant over there. Let's have a look at it. It's garlic! Brilliant! Not only can we eat it, but we can also use it as defence against vampires. <laughs> this land here is actually starting to look really good now. It could do with a little bit of work to make it slightly more flat, but that wouldn't be too much difficulty. Not when I've got a proper shovel anyway, made out of copper or bronze. Look at that, we've even got a bubbling brook over here. And best of all, a great big sodding mountain that's just screaming to have a signal fire built on it. This place is starting to look like a really good candidate for our new settlement. What I'll need to do, however, is find the best place to start building it. This small hill here could be a good bet, and it gives me a good view of the surrounding area too. And it comes with its very own hot springs! Oh, that's an added bonus! Brilliant! Sorted. Right, that's it. My decision's made. Let's get the chest placed down on top of this hill and start to get to work on my first new building. First, I'll get rid of this annoying block here. Then find the two chests in my inventory. There they are. Just put them in my hotbar. And just plonk them both down here. Right, I'll start storing the stuff I don't need immediately. Then I'll start building my first house using these pine logs I've got in my inventory. But because that's quite boring to watch, what I'll do is I'll pause the video and start playing it again once I'm done. So I'll see you guys then. Right, bit of a situation. I accidentally built the house just a little bit larger than I intended, and as a result, I don't have enough wood to finish the roof. So yeah, as you can see, it's kind of half done, and I kind of a little bit exposed to any zombies or spiders that might come in. So I'm hoping this is going to be a relatively peaceful night, but hey, you know, that's probably just tempting fate. And why isn't this working? Come on, I'm trying to make a, a basic bed. Oh, maybe because it's against the wall. Right, I'll try breaking it and moving it to the center and see if that works. Actually, it might have been because of the torch. But hey, it's working now, so that's cool. Time to save my respawn point. This bed is too uncomfortable to fall asleep. Yeah, that's okay. You can't skip time, but at least it saves the respawn point, which is all I need. Okay, I moved this chest earlier before I finished the house, so I'll have to put everything back inside it again. And now that I've got walls, I can actually place this tool rack on one and start unloading all these excess tools I've got on me that I don't actually need right now. At least it saves some of my inventory space. Ah, what the heck. Might as well just leave the stone hoe on that as well. What I will keep on me are those reeds, because I'll plant those next to that small pond tomorrow, and these bushes as well, because I'll plant those for food. And at some point during the night, I'll have to claim that reward bag just to see what I get. But that's all going to be pretty boring, so I'll pause the video for you now, guys, and I'll see you all in the morning. And we're back! And as you can see, I very quickly patched up the roof, first thing this morning in fact, and what I'll do now is I'll start planting these bushes out here, along with this lemon tree, which I kindly got as a reward from the reward bag, which was very useful indeed. And the one thing I will say is that the longer I spend here, the more I'm actually liking this place. And best of all, as I head over this way, I discovered that these trees over here are hickory. Which, in my opinion, is one of the best wood you can get in terra firma craft, because not only does it look great, but it is also one of the hottest burning woods in this mod pack, which is going to be a huge help when it comes to cooking food. 
Plus we've got flat land and a source of fresh water over there which will be ideal for farming and once we get a metal bucket of water we can irrigate it further, which will be great. And yeah, it's this place is just absolutely amazing. I am more than happy to start a settlement here. So, that's my plan. Starting from next episode onwards, I shall start making this place safe and secure so that the village elder and his people can one day settle here as well. In fact, that reminds me, how far away are we from our original settlement? I mean, there's the peninsula I sailed around to get here, so it should be just up here. Actually, it's not that far away at all. In fact, it's probably quicker if I went across land to get there. But that depends on what the terrain's like, of course. I do like the fact we've got that great big mountain over there. That's going to be really handy for the signal fire. So, yeah, I think this is the place. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we've hit that 20 minute mark, so I guess it's time to wrap up this episode. And remember, if you liked what you saw, please hit the like button and subscribe, that always helps. And as always, this is Robertson, signing off.